Welcome back to Mason Talks. So yesterday, the Cleveland Browns were destroyed by the New England Patriots. The final score was 45-7. to The Browns are now back at 500 with a record of 5-5. Five and five. And overall, things are looking pretty gloomy for the Cleveland Browns. Now, coming into this season, expectations were high. And for good reasons. The Browns went to the divisional round of the AFC playoffs last year. They were returning with the NFL's coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. They added plenty of talent to their defense in free agency and through the draft. Expectations were high for a good reason. And yet again, the Cleveland Browns have disappointed. And with those expectations considered, I would say so far the Browns have been the biggest embarrassment in the National Football League. And it's for a myriad of reasons. And there's really nobody on this team who can hide from the blame. I think that when you're looking at the failure that has been the Cleveland Browns, the first place to start would be with Kevin Stefanski. Because he's the leader of the team. He's the head coach. And when your team disappoints, you as the head coach naturally take the brunt of that blame. Looking at Kevin Stefanski, I don't think that he's necessarily somebody you need to call for his head. I don't think we need to start those talks. I don't even think that the talks of removing his responsibility of play calling, I don't even think that that is necessarily fair. But I do think that his decision making in game this year has been suspect. I mean, there have been times where the play calling has looked a little strange. Even yesterday against the New England Patriots, the Browns, for whatever reason, fell into one of the favorite uh, strategies of Freddie Kitchens, which was to leave Baker Mayfield uh, in in an empty set and shotgun, which you're basically just saying... We're going to let him be the workhorse of this offense, which doesn't make any sense because we've seen Baker fail in that scenario a ton when he's in those types of sets. And we know what he's good at, which is operating the offense in play action passing. And the play action passing game just hasn't been there this year. The Browns have not done it nearly as much as they did last year. They didn't do it nearly enough yesterday against the Patriots, and the offense suffered because of it. That is Kevin Stefanski's fault. That is somewhere where you can say, well, what is he doing? What is his plan here? And I think another issue that Stefanski has had has been with his fourth down play calling because it's been inconsistent. There have been times where he probably should have gone on fourth down where he didn't. There have been times where he probably should have been conservative and just taken a field goal where he decided to go on fourth down. That is an issue he has to iron out. I'm not against being aggressive in play calling. I'm just saying do it when it makes sense. Do it when it is smart. And Kevin Stefanski has failed at that. So he absolutely takes blame. But as we continue to look down the coaching staff, I think the guy who should absolutely be uh, getting looked at is defensive coordinator Joe Woods because the defense has been a, a, a massive disappointment. Now, don't let the national media's talk of, you know, oh, the Browns have one of the best defenses in the league. They have a top 10 defense. It's not true. Our defense is not one of the best in the leagues. You can throw all these stats at me about, you know, pass rush, whatever, all the defensive stats that the Browns somehow rank top 10 in. I don't care. If you watch these games, like the game against the Chiefs in week one or the game against the Chargers or or, or yesterday's game against the Patriots, you watch these games and one of the biggest issues is the defense. The Browns' defense is incredibly streaky. There are some games where they absolutely shut down teams like they did against Joe Burrow and the Bengals, and then there are games like yesterday where you probably should have been able to make Mac Jones uh, uncomfortable. You probably should have been able to, to throw off the Patriots' offense and at least slow them down to the point where they're not scoring 45 points, and you couldn't do it. And part of it is the Browns' issue with not being able to get off the field on third downs, which is incredibly frustrating because they can never get off the field on third downs for whatever reason. 
And I think another part of it is just talent that is underperforming. I mean, Anthony Walker has been a disappointment at linebacker. I would say for the the, the, the majority of the season, John Johnson's been somewhat of a disappointment at safety. And there are really guys across the entire defense who you can point to and say they've been underperforming. They have not been helping as much as they've been hurting. And that is an issue. And I think a lot of it needs to go on Joe Woods because the the Browns defense has talent. I mean, Miles Garrett leads the league in sacks. Greg Newsom has been one of the best rookie defensive backs in the league. You still have Denzel Ward who can make big plays. You still have talent on your defense. They're just not playing well. And when that's the case, I think you've got to look at the coach. And I think Joe Woods deserves a ton of blame. And I just can't see how he is still with this team in 2022. There just doesn't seem to be a realistic scenario. The coaching staff has let the team down this year. That is undeniable. But another player who has let down the team is Baker Mayfield. Now, I am not... The, I'm, I'm not the person who's going to completely just blame everything on Baker and say that he has been just unsalvageable and there's been no positives from Baker Mayfield. That is not the case. And I know that people like to say that a lot. They like to blame the quarterback because it's a, 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 a simplistic way to look at the game and 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 Baker you know doesn't put up stats like uh, you know these other young quarterbacks in the league. But Baker Mayfield has not been that bad. He has not been the worst quarterback in the league. He has not been an utter atrocity for the entire season. But he definitely hasn't been good enough to win you games. He definitely hasn't been good enough to lead the offense to success on a regular basis. Much like the defense, Baker Mayfield has been incredibly streaky. I mean, he has some throws where you're like, wow, that was an incredibly accurate pinpoint throw. And then he has other throws, like yesterday, where he literally threw it to a defender where you're like, what the heck is is Baker Mayfield doing? Baker Mayfield's been a disappointment. And, you know, part of it is the shoulder injury. Part of it are the issues that he had with Odell Beckham Jr. earlier in the year. Part of it's not in his control, but another part of it is in his control. And, And another, you know, aspect to that is that he simply hasn't been good enough. And he's he he's let the offense down in 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 a, in a way similar to the way that uh, the defense has let the team down, and I think that's something the Browns are going to need to consider as they look at the future of this team. Is can Baker Mayfield ever be the guy who is consistently, you know, playing winning football for your team? That is something they they need to figure out. Um, but I think the biggest disappointment that the Browns have had and that. I, I isn't really that much in their control is with the lack of availability of key players in certain games because you've had issues with injuries, you've had issues with COVID. You know, yesterday's game could have been completely different had Nick Chubb played. Yesterday's game could have been completely different if, you know, Kareem Hunt was healthy and and available. And, you know, but that's the National Football League. I mean, that's how the league works for every single team. There are going to be games where you don't have players available that you would like to have available. The Ravens have had guys out the entire year, and yet they, you know, still are in the lead of the AFC North. You're going to have players unavailable, and good teams find a way to to step up, and good teams find a way to overcome that adversity. And the Browns haven't done that. The Browns have been a a bad team this year. And they currently sit at 5-5. Five and five. I would say right now, uh, playoffs are probably out of the picture. But there is one scenario uh, within which I think the Browns could, could resurrect their season. It's very unlikely. But when you look at these next three games, if the Browns found a way to win the next three games... They would not only be back in the middle of the playoff race, they would be probably in the lead of the AFC North. Because you play the Lions next week, who currently don't have a win. They have one tie with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then you play the Ravens back-to-back with a bye week in between. If you can win those three games, which is horrendously unprobable, but nothing's ever impossible. Let's, let's just keep that in mind. Keep that you know optimism. 
if you can win those three games, beat the Lions and then beat the Ravens twice, you will likely have a better record than the Ravens or you'll be tied with the Ravens. You'll have the same record as the Ravens. You'll be back in the midst of the AFC North race and and, and, and the AFC playoff race in general. And you can look at that and say, hey, we resurrected our season. We just got to you know continue against the Raiders and Packers and, 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 and so on. That's that's the game plan. That's basically it at this point. And if the Browns can't do that, if they come out of this stretch, you know, one and two with two losses to the to the Ravens, or if they come out with you know no wins and they somehow lose to the Lions next week, even if they only go two and one and you know they beat the Lions and then they beat the beat the Ravens once and then they lose to the Ravens, I even think that that would be basically a a you know death sentence for the Browns. I really think the only way they keep their playoff hopes alive right now is to win the next 3 games and then go from there. Um so so that's it. That's where we are at with this Brown season. It has been horrendously disappointing. Hopefully they turn it around. I doubt they will and sadly playoffs are probably out of the equation as of right now. Let me know in the comments, what have you thought of the Browns season? What did you think of their loss to the Patriots? Do you think they're the biggest disappointment in the entire league? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.